Well, did a little bit of decorating there, hung up a bit of memorabilia, and now it's time to get back to work. And one of the first things I want to tackle are the steering wheels for the rocket cars, and that's one of the things we hung up there on the wall. These are from the combo ride, and uh, it's the same steering wheel that was supposed to be in the rocket. So the first step is to get this off the wall. We're going to be sandblasting it and then painting it, 3D scanning it, then 3D printing it, and then using that print to make a mold that we can cast aluminum in. So it's going to be a lot of different little steps along the way, but it should be an interesting project, and it should be worthwhile because uh, if I do the ride the way it's supposed to be done, I actually need 20 of these steering wheels. I think it should be interesting. Or maybe not. Who knows? Could all be a huge waste of time. Alright, slight change of plans. Just got this out of the uh, sandblaster. And based on the finish that it has, it's a nice matte uh, blasted finish. I think we can probably just scan this directly and we don't need to paint it. I think the scanner should pick up on this pretty well. This was a Kickstarter that I backed uh, over a year ago and I received it and I think I took it out of the box once and uh, played around with it kind of haphazardly and then never played with it again. So it came with this turntable which should be nice for just doing that. Got the scanner, yeah. So that can go on there like that. So there's definitely an art to using this scanner. I had a lot of problems with it losing tracking. Because this is a 3D object and we wanna do all sides of it, uh, we need to stitch together multiple scans. Now we can either do this by moving the scanner around the object or we can do it by taking a scan of each side and trying to uh, stitch them together with a program. And both of these have their own problems. I got some results but I wasn't really happy with them. They were kind of lumpy and they didn't, they looked like they would need a lot of cleanup in, uh, in a CAD program to make them usable. So I decided I didn't want to spend any more time on this part of the project and uh, we're going to skip the scanning and the 3D printing and we're going to go straight to trying to make a cast from the original. Now there's a problem with that too because of the way this particular part is made. It takes extra time. So a pattern would really be the ideal way to do this. It's a nice matte uh, sandblasted finish but it did reveal uh, quite a number of imperfections in that and I think I want to try to fill those before I do anything else. So we're going to uh, get some glazing putty on this thing, fill some of the, the nooks and crannies. One minute, 37 seconds later. Well, I ended up putting on a lot more than I intended to. Just kind of kept going. So we'll let this cure and then uh, see just exactly how big of a mess I made for myself. So last week on the community tab of the YouTube channel, I posed a question asking about some rings that were on the rear of the rocket car on the original brochure. They kind of look like maybe exhaust ports and uh, got a lot of answers, a lot of suggestions as to what I could use, but I think uh, the resounding answer was that they were a Buick Venti port. Uh, it was just a cosmetic item. Uh, across the fender of a Buick and that kind of rings true because we also have the Buick hood ornament and uh, They were both things that probably could have been purchased back in the day from the JC Whitney catalog for next to nothing Of course just like all that old stuff. They're stupid expensive now So we're gonna have to work through that because I think I need like 30 of them if I want to replicate that Another thing I want to do is I need to put together a new flask for casting these in. My old one is too big and it takes too much sand. So I'm just gonna make a small one for this job. 
and just see how it goes. So now that we have our new flask made, uh, I think what I'm going to try to do is actually ram it up. I've got the steering wheel here all prepped, and uh, I, I think I'm just going to throw some sand in and ram this up and see if I can't make a mold. Now this is going to be a little bit more difficult uh, to go directly from this because of where the parting line is, but uh, we'll work through that. My bigger concern is the electric furnace, whether uh, the two kilogram crucible that's in that uh, has enough capacity to actually fill a mold that uh, is using this as a pattern. Uh, so that's going to be important to know. So I think we're going to ram this up and give it a try. Because the parting line is in such a weird spot here, you need to do some extra work. I wonder if we can mark the parting line. Yeah, that's actually pretty good right there. some fine sand directly up against the steering wheel. Flip this over and see what it looks like. All right, <clears throat> so here's where we have a little work now. We've got to cope down to that parting line. Doesn't look bad at all. 
Now all I need to do is not screw up. We need a way to get the metal into the mold now. That did not fill. Just a reminder that uh, in two weeks, I'm going to be down in uh, Gibtown at the trade show. And if you see me wandering around, say hi, and I will give you one of our new channel stickers. All right, I don't expect that this has filled completely. I don't think the aluminum was actually as hot as the thermostat said. I also think maybe the gate that I put in was not quite big enough. This has been sitting for uh, about half an hour. No, we didn't get... We didn't get diddly. We got nothing. I think our gate here wasn't nearly big enough, but this aluminum was not as hot as it needed to be. So that means we'll have to try again. If you look here, this is all we got. <laughs> the flask really needs to be a little bit bigger for this to give us more room for gates and runners, but it is what it is. We're going to take what we learned from the last two attempts and keep what worked and uh, change what didn't. I've determined that that crucible uh, is going to be barely big enough. And it's only going to be big enough if we pour straight down the center, right into the hub. We don't have any extra for risers or gates or anything. So if we want to try to make this work, that's the way we're going to have to do it. Damn it. Did not work. This, I think, can be salvaged. Well, it turns out that that mold could not be salvaged, uh, nor the next uh, half a dozen that I tried to make. We had a real problem getting the moisture content of the sand right, but we did finally get a mold that works, and we're going to pick up with that. So this has been cooling for about half an hour and I don't have a lot of hope for it. I really think that aluminum was not hot enough, but we shall see. That's, uh, I think that's usable. Let's get this pushed out of here and uh, see what the other side looks like. Well, that's not bad at all. Not too shabby. I am pleasantly surprised. Second time trying to pour it. I don't know how many times we tried to ram it up. So I gotta say I'm really happy with how this came out. It came out a whole lot better than I expected. Uh, yeah, it has some imperfections, but we can work around those. And uh, I'm really happy to see that all of our venting worked. It, uh, it rose up every single vent, which lets us know that we got a full pour. Uh, it looks like the crucible holds just enough metal to do this job. And I still think maybe it's not pouring it quite as hot as we would like it to be. But uh, this is perfectly acceptable.
few little imperfections here. I think we can just fill with some JB Weld. So our original with the wood plug and our copy with this metal plug that still needs to be cut out, drilled through. Well, I thought I had a 5 8 inch drill, which is what I need to, to drill out this hub, but uh, I can't seem to find it, so I'm going to have to uh, get one of those. But in the meantime, what I'm going to do is a little bit of filling of the imperfections on this. And to do that, what I'm going to use is the JB Weld. I'm going to use the JB Weld as if it was a, uh, a body filler. And my reason for doing that is because it's my understanding that uh, JB Weld will hold up to powder coating. So if I decide to powder coat these steering wheels, uh, the heat involved in that will not affect the JB Weld. And this is uh, sandable and fileable, so uh, we can use it just like uh, body filler. So that's my plan. Mix some of this up on my favorite uh, disposable mixing pads here. Really nice, these sheets. Uh, slightly, slightly waxed, but not really. And you just peel them off and get a new one. Wow, that's very runny. And there's a section in here that I want to fill in. I think that's where we're going to leave it for tonight. The next day. It's time to see if I went overboard with the uh, JB Weld on this. And all I have uh, for sandpaper are these discs that are intended for a DA sander. So we're just going to have to make the best of it here. Could probably get away with a coarser grit here. All right, we got a uh, 5 8 inch drill bit. So hopefully we can finish this up. See, I'm actually poking up through there, so I'm all the way in. I just need to put this in the mill now and clamp it down and deck that off. So I think that's all I'm going to do for now. Might go back and uh, do a little pinpoint uh, patching with a little bit more JB Weld, but uh, for now I'm, I'm happy with where it's at. And I only need to make 19 more of them. <laughs> so if you know where there's uh, some of these sitting on a shelf in an old barn somewhere, uh, be sure to let me know. Or, or even if you know who might have the original pattern, I'm sure those were destroyed years ago, but you never know, right? Somebody might have them. Otherwise, I'm just going to persevere and push through and get these done. Uh, next week, I think I'm going to try to powder coat this. And uh, also, we're going to start working on the upholstery. So if you want to follow along with all these projects, click that link to the left and come along for the ride.